Okay, so you're trying to 3D print something and you got a weird thing happening. It's like when you when you have like a curve at the top, you start getting these bridging lines across and your parts all holy and it's not working well. It looks kind of like this. So you're getting something like this result here. And we're going to stay here. So you have these incomplete layers forming here and you have these bridging lines here. So you first have to understand the basics of how 3D printing works physically, structurally, from an engineering point of view, how 3D printing works. So when you lay down plastic, what you're really doing is you're more laying down something like this. Forget about all the insides here. Okay, you're laying down something like that. So think of this as your 0.4 millimeter width and your 0.2 millimeter layer height. And think of this as all solid, so pretend all that's not there. When you print one part on top of another part, this is your layers. So these are the layers that form when you make your 3D print. This is your first 0.4 by 0.2 layer. This is your second 0.4 by 0.2 layer. Now, in the Z axis, it's not possible to make a curve. So this isn't what you think it is. You think this is a curved top. It's not. It's not a curved top. It's more like a um, it's more like a Mexican pyramid, the the Incan pyramids, where they are steps. Okay, they're all pyramids of steps, but the probably headphone users probably just got ears blown out. I hit the microphone. <laughs> so those steps are how the printer actually makes objects because you have to slice the object. So you take a curve and you slice it into what is effectively two-dimensional planes, drawings, and then you stack those drawings like this. You're stacking filament layers to get your 3D print. Well, how do you make a curve? Well, you make a curve by stair-stepping. So that is where you will take you know, the first layer of filament and you will offset the second layer of filament like this. And if you do that, you start to get an angle. And a curve is just where this, what I call translation, this lateral translation, changes more and 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 more, and more until you form the top. Well, here's the problem. Every time you translate the next layer sideways, it needs something underneath it to hold it up. That's the reason my cones have cones on top. And I don't allow the cone to continue curving like this. This actually has solid layers inside. Because you can't do a vase, a single wall print on a curve that goes over the top like this. And the reason is because eventually what's going to happen is this layer is going to be out here. And there's nothing to hold it up so it falls down. Now, it can't actually fall down because this end is attached to the model and this end is attached to your hot end. And what happens when you connect two points? You get a straight line, which means your filament looks like this which is how you get that. So let me show you this in the slicer. You can see here, I took this threaded model here. So this threaded model, and I brought it into the slicer. Now this is 0.4 nozzle thickness and a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And as you can see, you have layers. Each of these is a essentially a 2d slice of the model now this is the width of the filament path and this is how much translation there is laterally in order to form this curve shape see when you zoom out you see the shape of a thread but when you zoom in you realize it's in its discrete layers forming those threads and there's an overlap between the layers. If the overlap is insufficient to support it, first you're gonna start getting sloppy. 
So you'll have your layer and the end of the layer will go droop a little bit. Well, the problem is now there's less to support the next layer on top. So it droops a little more until you get a disconnect, which looks like this. Now, the reason you have this disconnect is because of this angle here. So this is too strong an angle. You're, you have to translate each layer too far in order to support the next layer. So to exaggerate this, to show you what this would look like if you were to exaggerate this motion, here is the same model, except this one is done with 0.4 by 0.4 millimeter layers. So I'm telling it to make, you know, the 0.4 millimeter extrusion, but a 0.4 millimeter thick layer height. And as you can see, the extrusion is unsupported. It's floating in the air because the amount that it has to move the next slice sideways in order to give me the sideways profile that I want. So from the side, this looks fine. But when you zoom in, you realize it's just floating in midair. You got holes in it. Well, what's going to happen is it's drawing this line right here. And when, when it, if it attaches here where it's more straight. So, for example, this model will attach just fine right here, even with a 0.4 layer, because one is directly above the other. But as we move outward and we start to form this profile shape here, this angled surface, the top of the curve, so to speak, you see the amount that it has to move sideways in order to create the profile results in this filament strand not touching this filament strand. So it will, it, it, the, the head will actually make this motion, but because the filament's not actually attached, when the head gets over here, there's going to be a straight line between here and here because the filament never attached. There was nothing to keep the filament from just following the, the hot end. And you end up with that. That's what these lines are. Those lines aren't bridging. See all these holes here? Those lines are the filament that are supposed to be filling these holes. <laughs> but it never attached because it was doing this. So there's only two ways to fix this. One way is to increase the number of perimeters. If you increase the number of perimeters, so you have, so you have this layer, and then you have this layer, but this layer has to go out too far. So what you do is you put another layer, you have two layers here. So now you have something to support that first layer. Now you're still going to have issues with the innermost layer. And in, in the case like that, that's one of those rare times where you might actually want to print um, outside in instead of inside out. When you have an internal curve, you want to print outside in for that section. Um, you might get some blobbing on your outside, so it depends. Now, the better way, of course, is to simply reduce the layer height. So if I go down to 0.1 layer... Now you can see it's an absolute solid model with nice, clean overlay. See, there's lots and lots of plastic being overlaid here. Let me zoom out. Let me scroll down here. Here we go. There we go. You can see that most of the layer is on top of the layer. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> you can see here at 0.1 millimeter, most of this layer is actually on top of the previous layer. The amount of overhang is minimal at best. So you have to lower your layer height to reduce how much it has to move sideways each layer in order to form that curve. This, a lower layer height might not even be enough. This might require both a combination of lower layer height and more perimeters combined in order to get sufficient support for those layers. Um, if this is this does not look like a vase mode print, but if this is a vase mode print, you might actually need to go sub 0.1 millimeter. So you might need to be able you might need to go 0.04 millimeter at least for that section um, in order to get enough overhang support to hold that up. 
and uh, well, not all printers can do 0.04 millimeter. That's a that's a resin resolution. Um, some can, like an Ender three can do it if it's properly tuned. An Ender five can do it. I've done 0.02 um, with the Ender five. The Ender two can do it um, if they're properly tuned. So your kinematics are straight. Your frame is straight because your stepper motors need to be able to reliably lift up that tiny minuscule amount each time it does it. One of the reasons the Ender 5 and other Core XY style printers are capable of doing this is because they're not lifting the hot end, they're lowering the bed. So gravity's helping them. Um, but on a model like this, the, the if you can't fix it with perimeters and layer height, the proper solution would be to um, remodel the file. So, for example, on this file here, I can show you in the slicer. On this file here, you see I have an internal chamfer on the inside. There we go. So, you see I have this internal chamfer here going from this diameter to this diameter. And I just have to make sure that the angle that that chamfer forms on the inside of the shoulder here is within the you can see it here so imagine this on the inside so you have to make sure that that angle doesn't exceed how far you can go now your layer height is one half your nozzle width if you do a 0.4 by a 0.2 so that means you can very reliably handle a 45 degree angle without a problem 45 degrees is pretty steep that's about that you could probably go 50, 55 and still get away with it. You go more than 55, 60, and you're going to start getting drooping. Now, it's also important to realize that top angle is different than bottom angle. Top angle, you can go down to here like this because it's being supported by the layers below it. That's why when I print, for example, fins on a rocket like this, I have, I have to make sure that this here is pretty steep. In order to get a nice clean edge otherwise you get drooping this angle here however can be really shallow it doesn't have to be super steep because it's being supported by these layers which are firm underneath it so it's the underhang not the i don't know if it's called overhang but i'm calling this underhang you have to make sure the underhang is not too severe so if i have a really severe overhang here i can compensate by making the inside angle less severe or i can lower the layer height so if i go from 0.2 to 0.1 i now have to make two steps to create the same 45 degrees so to create my 45 degree angle wall that's not straight that's 45 degrees i have to move each layer over 0.2 millimeters one half my nozzle width if i go down to 0.1 I only need to move over 0.25 of my nozzle width, which means only 25% of the filament path is hanging over thin air versus half the filament path hanging over thin air. And if I were to try to do a 60 degree angle at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, I might have 75% of my filament path overhanging um, you know, air, and that's gonna cause a problem and you're gonna have detachment. And that's what you're seeing in this picture here. So when you see something like this, assuming it's possible to print, it is possible you will have an overhang that's not possible. So for example, this is an impossible print. That can't work. So how do I make it work? Well, I make it work by switching from single wall mode, and you can see there's a flat bottom inside there. So this portion of the model on the top here is actually layers with infill. So I, I bridge some infill across, and now I have a floor to hold up that extreme angle coming across. So when my, when, when my perimeter tries to do this, there's infill underneath here holding it up. And that allows you to do that. This is what's called an unsupported overhang. And the way you would fix this is either to change the model so it's not as severe, increase the number of perimeters, or decrease the layer height so you have less overhang per step. That's how you'd fix this kind of a model if you're having an issue with this happening. So this is not bridging. This is these filament lines that are missing, creating a straight line across between two points where it did touch the model. So again, to fix that, 
increase the number of perimeters, modify the model, um, decrease the layer height, or all of the above. You'll have to look in your slicer and look at the actual preview until you get a nice um, amount of overlap per layer. When you start getting to the point where you can see through it, you got to start worrying that you might have a little bit too much of an overhang. Like, for example, I'll show you one that's a little more visible, the white one. This one here is right on the edge. This is right on the edge of printable at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. If I were to angle that anymore, I'd start getting detachments. Have any questions? Ask down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And happy designing.